Okay, today we're going to be looking at percent of change. It's going to start out a little bit basic, but it's going to get more challenging. All right, this is what you need to know about percent of change. Percent of change is always the, found by finding the amount of change and dividing it by the original amount. So another way to write that might be to say percent of change is difference over original. So difference divided by original. Okay, keep that in mind whenever we're solving the next few problems. Okay, so the price of a shirt decreased from $32.95 to $28.95. I want you to find the percent of decrease. So whenever you're trying to find out by what percent it decreased by, the first thing we need to find is the difference. So what's the difference between $32.95 and $28.95? Okay, hopefully you can know that that's $4. Okay, so that's my difference for my formula percent of change I need to divide it by or my original. So it's going to be 4 divided by 32.95. So you're going to definitely want your calculator for this lesson. If I do 4 divided by 32.95, I'm getting something like this, about 0.1214, okay, something close to that. That's a decimal. I'm asking you for a percent of decrease. I'm going to round this to about 12.14% decrease. So that's how much less it is than it used to be. Okay, between 1940 and 1980, the federal budget increased from $9.5 billion to $725.3 billion. What was the percent of increase in the budget? Okay, now we can write those billions if we want. Um, I'll show you a shortcut so you don't have to deal with all of those extra zeros. But first, we want to do our difference. So if I do 725.3 billion minus 9.5 billion, I get 715.8 billion. And I'm just going to write that billion for now. So that's my difference divided by my original. And my original is 9.5 billion. Okay, instead of writing all the billions, I'm going to know that these zeros, all the zeros here, we could divide by a billion from the top and the bottom and have these billions cancel. So I'm going to do 715.8 divided by 9.5 and I'm going to get an answer of about 75.35. Okay, so you need to think to yourself, I did 75.35, is that 75.35%? No, that's the number 75.35, it's a decimal. So to change it to a percent, remember we're going to multiply by 100, or move the decimal over two spots. It's about 7,535% increase in the budget. So this is a huge percent of increase. All right, it would be awesome if you could get out your ruler and what I want you to do is measure the length of your pencil to the nearest inch. So all you're doing is you're taking your pencil and you're measuring it to the nearest inch. Okay, so when I measure my pencil to the nearest inch, and yours probably isn't exactly like mine, but mine is about 7 inches. Okay, I want you now to measure your pencil to the nearest centimeter. So you're going to go ahead and take that same pencil, but now you're going in centimeters and I'm getting about 18 centimeters for mine. Okay. And now, finally, I want you to measure to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. Okay, so mine seems to be about 17.8 centimeters. Okay, I hope you can see that we're getting more and more precise of our units here. We're going to today talk about this thing called greatest percent error or greatest possible error. And you need to know that the greatest possible error is always one half of the measuring unit. In other words, if you measured to the nearest inch that this was a 7 inch pencil, your pencil might have really been 6.5 inches. It could have been all the way up to almost 7.5 inches, like 7.4999. We don't want to keep going that forever. So it could be anywhere from, we'll say, 6.5 to 7.5 inches, even though it's really just under 7.5 inches. 
if we measure to the nearest centimeter, it could have really been 17.5 centimeters all the way up to really, really close to 18.5 centimeters. So you can notice that the most you could have been away is half of a centimeter in that case, or half an inch in the first case. To the nearest of the tenth of a centimeter now, it really could have been 17.75 all the way up to almost 17.85. So you're noticing here that we're only 0 0.05 off at most. So that 0 0.05 is our most possible error which is half of a tenth of a centimeter. So five hundredths is half of a tenth. So our greatest possible error is always half of our measuring unit. Okay, so what I want you to look at here, see if you can um, do the first part of this problem on your own, and then we'll talk about the second too. So you read the bathroom scale as 122 pounds. What is your greatest possible error? And then what is your percent error? So if I'm looking for greatest possible error in this case, I'm looking for, I read it as 122 pounds, so really I probably could have been anywhere from 121.5 all the way up to about 122.5 almost. The most I could have been off is half a pound. So 0.5 pounds is my greatest possible error. I'm going to abbreviate that GPE right now. 0.5 pounds, that's the most, the biggest error I could have. Okay, then it asks what my percent of error is. And so my percent is my difference over original. Okay, that's my percent of change. Same kind of formula here, the percent error. My greatest possible error was 0.5 over the amount that I had, which is 122. So I'm going to do 0.5 divided by 122. And I'm going to get that I have about 0 0.004, etc. Okay, so this is about 0.004. So that's as my decimal. I want to make it a percent, so I'm going to move the decimal over. It looks like about 0.4% is my percent error. So my measurement could be up to four tenths of a percent off of my actual weight in that problem. Okay. We're going to get a little bit more challenging now. We're going to move on from a linear measurement to something that has an area. So two-dimensional shape. So here's this garden plot. When it was measured, the dimensions were 156 inches by 84 inches. So we think it's going to be 156 by 84 is what you really think it should have been. So I'm going to go ahead and find the area of that, even though the question doesn't ask that yet. But it looks like my, according to my calculations, this garden plot is 13,104 square inches. Okay. It says, use the greatest possible error to find the minimum and maximum possible errors. So I'm going to want to look at this like a minimum and say, what are my possible measurements here, my minimum possible? If I was under and I rounded, I could have really been 155.5 inches by 83.5 inches. That would be the smallest I possibly could have gotten. So 155.5 times 83.5, that's 12,984.25 square inches. Okay, now I want to find the maximum possible area. So if I had, had greater than I actually measured, but on the upper end, so I could have been up to almost 156.5 inches by 84.5 inches. So I'm going to do the same thing, 156.5 times 84.5, and that's going to be 13,224.25 square inches, okay? And then what I'm looking for, so this is going to be the max area and the minimum area, what my greatest percent error is, is what's your percent of error that I could be. So remember, this 13,104 was what I said it should be. And I want to find the difference, so I can get a percent, a difference over my original. So if I was under, and I do 13,104 minus 12,984.25, it looks like the minimum has an error right here of about 119.75. My maximum, I'm going to do 13,224. 0.25 minus my original 13104, 
it looks like this one has a difference of 120.25. So this difference with the maximum is a little bit bigger of a difference. So when I find my percent error, I want to know like what was my biggest percent error that I could have had. So I'm going to take that error, 120.25 square inches could have been my most error, divided by my original, 13,104. I'm going to go ahead and divide that. And I get this, 0 0.0092, about, about 0 0.0092. So then I'm going to go ahead and make that into a percent, move the decimal over twice, 0.92% about is the percent error. So you have almost 1% error in your measurement, which might not be a big deal for a garden. It could be a big deal if you were trying to get a man to the moon. Okay, I want you to try this one completely on your own. Okay, and then I will also do it and you can come check it. Okay, so here you are. You've got a library book and you record its width as 17.6 centimeters. So I want you to be thinking, okay, that might have been anywhere from 17.55 all the way to 17.65. So it looks like your actual error could have been up to 0.05. So 5 hundredths of a centimeter is the error that you could have had. So that's my difference that I could have had. I want to divide that by my original. So I have 0 0.05 divided by 17.6, and it looks like I'm getting about 0 0.0028. And again, I'm going to make that into a percent. So it looks like about 0.28% error in my library book measurement. Okay. Not too bad, that's relatively specific, well, relatively precise. Okay, and this is probably the toughest one, so we'll see if we can get this one. A small jewelry box measures 7.4 centimeters by 12.2 centimeters by 4.2 centimeters. Your job is to find the percent error in calculating its volume. I would love it if you tried this one on your own. Um, if you need help, just come back and look what I am doing because I am going to work this problem out. So again, a good first step to be defined its volume. It's a box, so it has the volumes formula as length times width times height. So it looks like at first I have 7.4 times 12.2 times 4.2. I'm going to go ahead and multiply those out. And it would be great if you did that as well. And I get about... 379.176, this will be cubic centimeters, okay? And then it's always good to figure out what is going to be the minimum and the maximum. So in the minimum, we could be like half the measuring unit off, so it might be up to 7.35 times 12.15 by 4.15, okay? And I'm going to multiply that out, and then I'm going to find my maximum, and so my maximum is going to be um, 7.45 by 12.25 by 4.25. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate both of these. Okay, it looks like for my minimum I'm getting about 370.6, and I'm going to do some rounding right now. And for my maximum I'm getting about 387.8. Around to there right now. Okay, so we're looking at these three measurements, and I want to see which one's the furthest away between the maximum and the minimum, which one's further away from the original. Okay, when I find the difference here between 370.6 and 379.16 between these two, it seems like the difference is about 8.576. Okay, and when I find the difference between the other two, I actually use the number in my calculator, so this might be a little bit off, but about 8.69, close to that, is the difference here. Okay, so you can see that the difference for the maximum is a little bit bigger, so when we find the percent error, I want to use this value. So I've got 8.69 divided by the original, 379.176, and we're going to go ahead and just divide that out and we get about 0 0.0229, we'll say. So we're going to make this into a percent, and it looks like about 2.29% error. 
All right. Go